Well, here's the complete list of equations, uh, notes, for what we've been doing with momentum and impulse. So up here at the top, uh, these are the ones that we've been using all along with, um, you know, F equals MA. And from that, we get the, um, you know, the momentum is, is mass times velocity. And here we go, the momentum and uh, the change in the momentum is going to give you the impulse. So hopefully going through that assignment has kind of uh, taught you how to use all of these equations. What we're looking at today is conservation of momentum. So these are interactions between objects. And here's the equation that's going to govern conservation of momentum. All you need to know is this. The momentum before the interaction is equal to the momentum after the interaction. In any interaction, the momentum after is equal to the momentum before. So we look at three different scenarios. One of them is elastic. That's when the objects bounce off each other. They don't join together. So they, they, uh, they go off as separate objects after they collide. And here's what the equation will look like. We have the individual momenta of mass 1, the individual momentum of mass 2. And after they collide, their velocities will change. But the total momentum that they have will not. So the total momentum before is going to equal the total momentum after. And that's in the first video, the first YouTube video that I showed you illustrates that kind of, uh, of collision. You just always had to remember that the velocity can be positive or negative, right? The momentum can be positive or negative, and you have to make sure to include those signs when you do it. The inelastic case is when they do stick together, like two lumps of clay smacking into each other, and they just go off together or, you know, two cars colliding on the road and they, uh, they uh, just, you know, mash into each other. Here they have individual momenta before they collide, just like in the first case. The only difference is after they collide, they will unite as a single object. Their mass um, will combine and they will have one single velocity between them. They've united as a single object. But again, the total momentum after the collision and the total momentum before the collision will be the same. So it's the same rule. The total momentum before equals the total momentum after. The other situation, which uh, FET doesn't have a, uh, a nice example of, is the explosion kind. That's when objects push apart, for example. And, and the best example here that we're going to be using is uh, like, you know, a gun firing a bullet. When a gun... And uh, so before you fire the bullet, the gun and the bullet both have momentum zero. Neither one of them is moving. But after you fire, the bullet will have a momentum in one direction. The gun will have a momentum in the opposite direction. So one will be positive, one will be negative. But the two of them together will still have a total momentum of zero. That is... A rule that will not get violated. Whatever the momentum, momentum was before, which in this case, if it's an explosion, it's zero. It will still be zero after. Even though a lot of kinetic energy is created, the bullet flies one way, the gun recoils in the other direction. Even though a lot of kinetic energy is created, no momentum was created. Because the momentum is a vector quantity. So you have... Uh, kinetic energy in one direction, kinetic energy in the other direction, but the total momentum that they have would actually be zero because one is positive and one is negative. 